Hey guys, what is going on? My name is NoJ456, and today I'm going to be undertaking the task of explaining the entire Call of Duty Zombies storyline as it pertains to the giant, everything that happens inside of the giant, what happened before it, what's going to happen after it, and how it ties in with Shadows of Evil and where it sits inside of the just entire Call of Duty Zombies storyline. So, this is not going to be a short video. Make sure you buckle in, sit tight, and if you guys do end up enjoying this, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe for future DLC videos and storyline explanations, and let's go ahead and and get started with talking about how this map ties in with the rest of the Call of Duty Zombies storyline and all of the quotes that go along with this map. Initiating test number six. Subject is within test chamber. Activate power. Damn it, Edward! Did you set up the device correctly? Yes, Doctor. As per your specifications. If you had done it to my specifications, then it would have worked, wouldn't it? As usual, your incompetence has... What? Do you hear that, Doctor? Quiet, you fool! Test number six is a failure, but the experiment has caused some kind of electrical force to energize within the chamber. Well, open the door! Doctor, I don't think... Open the door! Now! Damn it, Samantha, I told you never to come in here. Edward, get her out of here. Yes, Doctor. What's wrong with her? Daddy, what did you do? Lassie! Come back here, Samantha! Stop her! Easy. Come here, Samantha. Good girl, Flossie. Gently, Samantha. That's not Flossie anymore. We must get out of here. What? Edward, what are you doing? Open the door! Edward, open this door now! I'm scared. Don't go. Stay by me, Samantha. Goodbye, Dr. Maxis. <laughs> So this is the last thing that we get on Doris, and this is exactly the moment where the giant picks up with, as you can see by the cutscene. Stay by me, Samantha! Goodbye, Dr. Maxis. <laughs> this ain't funny, Doc. Turn around. Slowly. Do you know who I am? Yeah, we know. That's why you better do exactly what we say. A great evil approaches. There is a chain of events that must be set in motion. The future hangs by a thread. You must awaken the test subjects. Richtofen! Whatever you're thinking of doing, don't do it! You do not want to meet what's on the other side of that door! You cannot begin to comprehend the great evil you could unleash! Richtofen, I thought we were done with this! What can I say, Dempsey? Things change. <laughs> Only a fool would dare to change history. I am no fool. What I do, I do only to secure a better tomorrow. Yeah, well, let's see if we live to see it. So almost simultaneously as the original four characters show up at the Duris facility, we have something else going on at Griffith Station on the moon. Tanks are full and the shields are down. The machine is humming nicely. Good. We 
And what of the shipment? Most are buried outside of the base. The live ones we've sent back to Kustva Postal. Excellent. There is nothing left but to wait for Dr. Richthofen's return. Perhaps this is a good time to work on my low-gravity putting in the biodome. Yes. A little leisure time would. Intruder detected. Receiving bay. This is not a Security. Report. This is not a Can you repeat? She's coming right, Tolton! Get her! Get back here! Nay! Do not let her! Damn it! Dr. Schuster, find a way to get her out of the pyramid. I will contact Edward and let him know there has been an incident. So the last couple of minutes can be summarized into this. Basically, Richthofen betrays Maxis and teleports both Maxis and Samantha away, and Samantha arrives on the moon. At the same time that Samantha arrives on the moon, we have the original four characters confront Richthofen, and Richthofen confront his older self, which can be seen in the cutscene. But while they are being confronted, while Richthofen is being confronted, we have Samantha who actually runs into the MPD device on the moon, which inserts her into the ether and gives her the control of all of the zombies. So at this point, we are actually going to dive into the giant and talk about all of the different character quotes that we get inside of the giant and what they mean. So, you gonna tell me what the fuck you were doing back there? Dempsey, my dear simple-minded American, you simply wouldn't understand. Right after we got here, after you said goodbye to your evil twin, you did something strange. Strange? Haha, <laughs> Dempsey, you're really going to have to narrow it down. I know you're sick, Richthofen, but why were you messing around with your own corpse? That wasn't my body. That was someone else entirely. Someone a bit like me, but not. He's dead. Hey, I know what I saw. I saw you stoop down and hold something against the body. Pictures, Dempsey. Pictures. Or it didn't happen. There was something I was going to ask you. What was it? Ah, oh, dear Dempsey. Is your memory loss perhaps due to your prolonged exposure to Element 115? Or are you just one of the So in this conversation Dempsey's. between Edward Richthofen and Tank Dempsey, two different things are brought to light. Number one is that Edward doesn't know which version of Dempsey and the other characters he is dealing with right now. And the reason for that is that in Origins, there was a little bit of a change in our characters. We had used to just seeing like Nikolai always talk about vodka, Takio would only speak in uh, Proverbs and everything like that. And in Origins, our characters seem to be a little bit more kind of there in the head. Obviously, they were test subjects. They were kind of tested upon and they have kind of been brainwashed over and over and over in some versions of themselves. Some versions of themselves are the true versions of the characters which is their actual personality, there isn't anything kind of like tampering with their head and Edward doesn't know which one he's dealing with. He doesn't know which dimension he is in and he doesn't know which version of these characters they are. And the second thing brought to light is the fact that Edward stooped down over his body during the cutscene and did something with the body. He is seen with the uh, blood vials just kind of linked to mob the dead on his chest with the different prisoner numbers on his chest so there's a connection with mob of the dead there but his character that just stooped down over his body and did something and he just said pictures pictures or didn't happen kind of making an excuse for why he was messing with his own body but there was definitely something that we do not know what it is but there was definitely something that he was doing with his old body and that was revealed with that little conversation right there can i trust you nikolai because last time i checked we were enemies when did you last check we were allies in all three world wars! Richthofen seems to think he has some kind of plan. I'm not so sure about that. I think he's delusional. When Richthofen speaks of putting things right, do you think he has found a way to end this nightmare? After France, I'm starting to believe that anything is possible. Maybe there is a way to end all of this. To return to our homes, our old lives, our families. Our families? <laughs> How many wives is it you've had, Nikolai? I gotta be honest, I lost count. As a Russian, I know how to endure, how to survive. Dare I hope for something more than that? You can dare, but I don't know if it'll do any good. In my experiences, wishes hardly ever come true. So there are two different things that you can pull from this conversation. Number one is that these are more than likely the characters who were in France. They reference France, which is the location of Origins. These are probably the same versions of the characters that were around in Origins, number one. Number two is that they're tired. They want to fix everything. They want to sever everything right. And they want to just not have to survive anymore. At least Nikolai strongly, strongly expresses this, that he's just tired of fighting. He wants to go back to his old lives. He just wants his family. And he wants a normal life. Now, Tank doesn't share that as much. He just is kind of just not trusting of Richthofen, and he is probably correct to do so, as you guys will see in just a second here. 
Hey, Tack, we gotta keep an eye on Richtofen. I don't know what he's up to, but I don't like it. I share your concerns, Dimsey. We would be wise to remain cautious. Did you notice him doing something weird when we first got here? Weird describes much of what Richtofen does. Right after he popped himself, when we were holding back the horde, Richtofen knelt down over the body. Why? Perhaps he was paying respects to his foreign self. We gotta piece it all together, Tack. Why the fuck did he come here? Again. We know not where Richtofen has traveled. But I believe his experiences have changed him. Wherever he's been, whatever he's been through, I'm not sure Richtofen's any less crazy than before. Mysteries will reveal themselves in time. They always do. This is the nature of our quest. So again, this theme of trusting Richtofen and is Richtofen holding anything back from these characters is brought up once again. There's not too much information to talk about here, but all will become clear very, very soon. German, I will keep asking until I get an answer. What are we doing here? Putting things right, Nikolai. Putting things right. Your words are empty. Your soul is hollow. How could you ever hope to put things right? Nikolai, I realize that I'm often hostile towards you. It's simply because your ideology is diametrically opposed to mine. We are allies only because of our situation. We will not fight shoulder to shoulder forever, Richtofen. Though we may not see eye to eye, Nikolai, know this. I possess an artifact that will help us on our journey. You can never wash away the blood on your hands, Richtofen. You are an evil that must be stopped. I'm helping you more than you realize, Nikolai. After all, didn't I just kill myself a little while ago? I know what I'm doing. The beacon will allow Maxis to find us. Who is this Maxis? I've never seen him. Apart from that brain in a jar we found in France. So here we are, farther proof that these characters are the same ones that were in Origins, referring to the Maxis drone as the Maxis brain that was basically put inside of this drone and was able to fly around. Richtofen is referencing him, and he mentions the beacon. Now, the beacon is one of the keys to understanding this map, and I will explain that all in just a second here, but we need to get to the bottom of should these characters be trusting Richtofen or not? Is he holding information back, or is he just not able to explain it? Is it too complicated? Why is Richtofen so secretive about what he is doing here? Besides our thirst for battle, you and I have little in common, Nikolai. You are mistaken, Takio. I have no thirst for battle. I fight because I have to. You have a great disdain for the German. Why does your hatred run so deep? Do I really need to explain that? I mean, really? He is a troubled soul. I can see it in his eyes. But a monster? Huh, I think not. Have you forgotten Richtofen's thirst for chaos? He is a monster. An animal. We know not of the journey Richtofen has taken. He may hold more wisdom than you realize. I fear any wisdom he holds will only be used to advance his own agendas. We will only survive if we all work together, Nikolai. You know this in your heart. Richtofen was the one who left us in the dark, Takeo. We have no idea what he has been doing. So Takio in each of the conversations with the characters seems to be very defensive of what Richtofen is doing. He's saying he probably has a purpose, he just will reveal that in time and you just need to trust him, you need to worry about it. But this is the actual confrontation between Takio and Richtofen. German, your actions defy reason. But you seem driven by a sense of purpose. I do have a purpose, Takeo. A purpose you will come to share. You only have to trust me. You trade on lies and deceit, Richtofen. Give me one reason why I should trust you. I don't have time to explain now, but I have a message for you. A message from the Emperor. What do you know of the Emperor? It has been so wrong. I feared he had abandoned me, forgotten me. You have not been forgotten, Takeo. Stay strong, and your path will become illuminated. I do not understand your riddles, German. How will my path become illuminated? The spirits of your ancestors are not the only voices you will hear, Takeo. Trust your instincts. Listen to them. Last night I had a dream. I dreamt of a house. A house with uh, children. Yes. Hold on to that thought, Takeo. In time, you will come to learn the significance of your visions. 
So Takio begins to question Richtofen about his plan and his motives, and Richtofen immediately deflects away to the Emperor just to get Takio off of the subject, talking about the Emperor, remembering his home and everything. But then something interesting happens. He talks about a vision with the children, and Richtofen actually reveals, yes, this is very important, and it will be revealed in time. Now, the common theory going around right now is that the children that he is referencing are actually the children in the Origins cutscene, which I will now show you guys as reference. As the gates to Agartha opened, the four heroes were rewarded with riches beyond imagination. From that day forward, they knew that Samantha would keep them safe. Forever. You're getting everything wrong. I told you before that her eyes should be blue. It's my turn, Eddie. I can do whatever I want. But you don't even know how to play properly. Girls don't know enough about zombies. What's the choice of a shooting? Make sure the windows are locked before you come down to the basement. You better do what your dad says. I didn't even get my turn. Tomorrow, Eddie. You get to make the rules. I promise. Come on, Fluffy. I wish the heroes in our stories were real, Sam. I know what you mean. But we will make everything okay. My dad says he has a plan. Day 66. The children are gone, and the house feels empty. I miss their laughter, their games. The sirens have not sounded for several months. I do believe that we may have turned the tide in the battle, but at what cost? The radiation levels from the fallout remain dangerously high. I can only pray I live long enough to confirm that my plan was indeed successful. And the dark presence that has haunted our dreams and infected every facet of our existence has finally been vanquished. So in the radio you just listened to, which is found on the giant, we have Maxis talking about the children and how they have left the house, which is referencing the children in the Origins cutscene. The children in the Origins cutscene, Samantha and Eddie, have left the house and are no longer there. You hear a siren in the Origins cutscene, which means that Maxis is recording this little audio log a few months after they have left, because he says in the audio log that it has been a few months since the siren sounded. So it's been at least a few months since that, since that moment, and Maxis is dying from radiation, but he wants to see if his plan has worked and what this plan is Samantha actually references it in the origin cutscene he says my dad has a plan don't worry and then uh, and then Max says I, I hope my plan has worked I hope everything is set right and we get a little bit more information about this in just a second here she may have been returned to me but I fear she is not as she was in recent months she has barely said a word when she did it was only to cry out for him to call his name. What have I done? So Samantha has been returned to Max's. However, Eddie has not come back and Samantha has been changed for the worse. She is not talking, she's not speaking. The only thing she does is cry out Eddie's name and just wonder what happened to him. And this is something that is still a mystery to us. In these dark days, I find myself clinging to the belief that there may still be a way to set things right. Though my understanding of the ethereal realm remains limited, I am convinced that the manipulation of the energy fields within all matter is vital to uncovering the dimensional gateway itself. It is my sincerest hope that somewhere in the realm beyond, my beloved Samantha still lives. I can only pray that Edvard will have the courage to fulfill the vow he made all those years ago. So Samantha is alive in this other dimension, but here Maxis is hopeful that he can find a real living Samantha the way she was, the way she was a happy child, she was always upbeat and everything like that, and not this kind of zombie-like Samantha where she just has no emotions, all she is is crying out for Eddie and just basically a dead girl. But there is hope for her because Maxis thinks he has figured out the secret to interdimensional travel and hopes that Richtofen can complete his promise that he promised all those years ago. Now, what this promise is might become a little bit more clear after these next couple of scenes. Maxis! No, wait. Come on. 
Compose yourself, Edward. <sighs> Mission accomplished. Temporal disruption achieved. The future is changed. So this quote shows that Richtofen is out to change the future. He is out to set things right or what he believes is right. He is out to help out Maxis and actually complete his task, which is making the future a better place or what he thinks is a better place for the future. But he is not the only one out to do something in the future. Field report. Dimensional insertion point was off. We were too late. Richtofen interrupted established continuity. What happens next is uncertain. Allied operatives MIA. I have no choice but to continue the mission alone. So Dempsey, Nikolai, and Takia are out to stop Richtofen. And Dempsey states that the dimensional insertion point was off and they could not stop Richtofen from changing the past. Richtofen obviously shot himself, interrupting an established continuity in kind of the progression of a timeline of this dimension. And he has changed the future. Even Dempsey says himself, the future is uncertain. I am not sure, but Dempsey actually talks to himself a little bit later on inside of one of these radios found on the giant. Hey, other me. If you're hearing this, then it means that something's gone foobar. We're going to plan B. Stick to that German like glue. We need to find out what he has been doing and what he's going to do. We may be able to get a fix on your location if you can trigger one of the Paradox visualizations. Good luck. We're all counting on you. Oh, wait. Whatever you do, don't get too close to the radioactive beacon. It makes your hair fall out. So here we have a mention of the beacon, which is one of the most important things in the giant. And the way the beacon is actually activated is through the old flytrap Easter egg. Obviously, you need to get a pack a punch gun, go over to the location, shoot the wall, have everything activated, and then go find the three different things around the map. And these are the quotes that Maxis gives you whenever you shoot each one of these things and whenever you activate and complete the flytrap Easter egg. Well, I want to play a game. Let's play hide and seek. Those were her exact words. Sooner or later, I will find you. Together, we will ensure a better future for the children. Hey, you found one. I can hear her. Even now. found another one. There must be a purpose to this. I see it. The beacon is lit. I know where and when you are. So whenever this beacon is lit, it acts like an interdimensional lighthouse that basically informs everyone who is looking for it of your location. And obviously Maxis says he knows when and where we are. Maxis is informed. However, in that last radio, Tank Dempsey notified himself that he needs to light a beacon so we can find out where he is. And apparently this is a different version of Tank Dempsey that, that seems like doesn't have any hair because he got too close to the beacon in a different timeline and a different dimension and all of his hair fell out. But now he knows where the first Tank Dempsey is. So we may end up having a kind of battle between our old, new characters, different dimensions of our characters. Much like Richtofen shot himself, we might have some of the same stuff happening with, uh, with Takio, Dempsey, and Nikolai. So absolutely amazing stuff, but we are not done yet. This is probably the most important part of the entire storyline. I thank you for your sacrifice, Edvard. Your courageous actions have opened new avenues of opportunity. It is my dearest hope that we may one day set things right and prevent these terrible events from ever unfolding. Look around you, Edvard. The giant sleeps. This facility was once alive with activity. Now, it is a graveyard. Group 935 are no more. What remains of their work has been scattered to the four winds. Only echoes and shadows remain. The test subjects can never be allowed to awaken. The havoc that could be wreaked upon the future by such simple-minded individuals could be catastrophic. Heed my warning. Remember what I told you, Edvard. The scars left by Samantha's past actions allow us to communicate across the rift. Follow my words. I will find you. When you release the beacon, I will secure your extraction and destroy the site. Remember, the burden is yours to carry, Edvard. The others 
must never know the truth. Whoever you are, wherever you are, I have one message. One message that must be remembered at all costs. The child must be protected. So that was a few different radios mashed together, but it gives us the most important information that we need to get out of this map, aside from the danger that looms above us that these characters are unaware of so far, besides Takio. But this radio mashup right here shows us that number one, this child must be protected. Samantha must be protected at all costs. She cannot suffer anything because she is the key to everything. And this is something that we've known for a long, long time. Samantha's basically been the key to zombies for a long time. She is the one that needs to be protected. She is the most important character. But in order to do this, we must not inform the other three characters. Richtofen must not inform Takio, Nikolai, and Dempsey on what his plan is. He has to ca carry this burden of what must be done by himself. If these test subjects, if they if they are informed of what the storyline is actually going to go, how these things are going to go down, they will ruin everything and the future will be lost because they apparently, according to Maxis, are just too simple-minded to understand what must be done to save the world. So, very, very interesting stuff. Extremely, extremely important that Richtofen doesn't tell them what's going on for for his and Maxis's sake and Samantha's sake. But one more thing is looming in the danger above all of this. My dreams are haunted by a man in shadow. I fear this vision may be a portent of our destruction. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I really don't have time to explain. I have a universe to set right. Thank you and goodbye. So in the last two years of Richtofen's absence, one of the places he visited was Shadows of Evil. He entered into this dimension, took the summoning key, and entered back out, just stating that this was needed to save the world. However, what he did not realize is that contained within the summoning key was the evil spirit of the Shadow Man still residing in there. And this is what Takio is seeing as their downfall in his visions and his dreams. So, very, very interesting just aspect of the storyline, something that we definitely need to look out for in the next DLC. And I'm extremely, extremely excited for playing Dirt Eyes and Dragons. So, anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Go ahead and leave a like. I'll be updating this whenever the new DLC comes out and we have all the storyline information contained in that. If you guys have enjoyed, a like would be very, very much appreciated. And anyway, I will see you guys all in the next one. And adios, my friends and amigos.